Hey, Bjorn. Hi. Okay. Yes. Oh, Bjorn. Hello. Welcome to Shad Life. Well, I have a box. <laughs> I also have the state. 4130 all road um i've already done some upgrades to this bike starting with the derailleur this is the state derailleur um 11 speed sram compatible which is pretty awesome because i put a rival derailleur on there this derailleur actually worked really good i did the meesville 56 which is a 56 mile gravel event with this derailleur, no issues at all. Um, but I did want to go with the rival um, because I just really picky about my shifting and I just like my shifting to be really crisp. This was pretty good, but it just wasn't as dialed as SRAM. Um, and then I upgraded SRAM cassette. Um, and I've updated the brakes on this bike because the brakes that came with it really sucked. I also went with compressionless housing, so I got TRP Spire brakes, compressionless housing. And then I have updated the bars. That isn't because the state bars were bad, because these are the stock bars. They're just, they're fine. They got a, a good amount of flare, um, almost as much flare as Jennifer Aniston in the movie Office Space, right? Um, but they're too narrow for me. So I would have kept them had they been the right fit, but they were too narrow. So I ended up going with salsa cow chippers, wider bar. Um, and then of course I updated the seat. But aside from those things, the spike is pretty much stock. Um, so I got a couple more things to add to it. So let's open up this box and talk about them. So if you've been following my channel and you know about this bike purchase, you'll know that I got the carbon monster fork with it. Well, it wasn't correct. So I just put it off, got my money back, and then uh, finally decided I do want a carbon monster fork. So I did get one. So here it is. <laughs> um, it looks correct. It's not defective. So. We're good to go. Um, my hope here is <laughs> this is going to be tapered and the steel fork is not tapered. So I think I still have the parts <laughs> that I need, the cup and all of that to install this. Crossing my fingers, I think they're in this mess over here somewhere. So I'm just going to have to look for it and hopefully find it because I need the race, the bearing, and the cup to put into the bottom so I can put this fork in there. So we'll, we'll see <laughs> if that happens. Um, I did order, since I had the opportunity, titanium bolts. I'm going to have to double check because these don't look titanium or feel titanium. Interesting. Unless they're somewhere else. These are not titanium bolts, even though I ordered them. So I'm going to have to contact them and get the titanium ones because I wanted the lighter weight ones. Oh, well, it is what it is. Can't always expect perfection. All right, and then I got a bag for the frame. And I also have a handlebar bag. So why did I get a bag? And I have a handlebar bag is because this bike is going to become more of my adventure bike um, because I now have the Cosmic Stallion, so, which is my performance gravel bike. And this can be more of an adventure bike and I can carry more stuff with me and, and so on. So that's the plan. Um, kind of stoked on it. So uh, what... I did is I weighed it because when I put the carbon fork on I want to see what the weight is. It's actually not bad as it is now. Keep in mind this is a 4130 steel frame, 4130 chromoly steel frame, 4130 chromoly steel fork and it weighs 26 and a half pounds. So that's pretty light for what this bike is. So 
kind of cool. Um, when I put the carbon fork on there, this thing could get closer to 24 pounds. That would be pretty nice. So yeah, let me put this stuff on it and then we'll see what the bike looks like when I'm done. Um, if I have a change of clothes, then you know that I didn't have the right headset parts and I had to finish this video on a different day. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. <laughs> Got the carbon gravel monster fork, I think they call it, on there. Uh, looks pretty cool. Makes this bike look a little bit more upscale than it was. Um, I don't know, I really liked this fork. I mean, it matches the paint. It's actually a very nice looking fork, pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I now have the carbon fork on here. Uh, shave off some weight, probably give it a little bit more crisp steering, but I do hope that the ride quality is still really good with the carbon fork. Um, I don't want to have like a harsh feeling ride with this bike, um, but it should be pretty good. And yeah, so I didn't want to put the bags on it yet. Uh, one, I have to wash my hands. I don't want to get grease all over my new bag. Uh, and two, let's weigh this without the bags on it and see how much it weighs. Okay, let's check it out. 24.58 pounds. So took almost exactly two pounds off this bike. But All right, here it is with the bags on it. Um, I really like this bag. This is actually a Cadero bag. Uh, Branded through wild. It's got a couple hooks on the front, so if I wanted to store some stuff on the front or clip a light on there, I could. Um, kind of neat. Uh, I've used this bag before. You can carry a lot of stuff in it. Um, this bag I'm a little questionable about. I mean, it is a state branded one that they had on sale. I mean, it has a good amount of space, but, um, and then it's got a little zipper pocket on this other side for maybe keys or something small like that. But the one thing I worry about with that bag is right now I could fit a water bottle here. I could put a larger one in there. But if I ever wanted to run two water bottles, um, <laughs> it isn't going to fit. I don't think a water bottle is going to fit in there. So that might be an issue. So who knows if I'll actually keep this bag and use it. Um, because if this is going to be for adventure, you need water. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if I can figure something out. But this might be a no-go. Um, there's no, as far as I know, yep, no mounts underneath to put a water bottle under there. Um, I do know I could mount a water bottle on the fork. Uh, they do make mounts, so I mean, maybe that's the solution. I don't know. I've never really been a bike packer, and running things on my fork, if I'm going to go over rough stuff, just makes me think it's going to rattle around. But maybe the better option would be to have two water bottles here and then have uh, mounts with uh, pack capability on the fork. Because a pack, I can cinch down really good, so it doesn't matter if it's rattling around, but I'm just picturing a water bottle on there and going over rough terrain and watching the thing fly out, or worse, fly out and go under my wheel or something. Uh, water bottles on forks, just, I don't know if that's always a good idea. I see it. I see people doing it. Um, so this is questionable. We'll see. Um, but there you have it. Uh, and I have one thing... <laughs> that I gotta mention before I end this video. This isn't complete. So here's one thing I wanna make sure everybody watching knows this. If you have a carbon fork, you do not pound one of these star nut washers in it for the compression bolt. You absolutely do not wanna do that. They make ones that are kind of a wedge system to where when you tighten down on here, it wedges and pushes to the outside of the fork. That's what you want for a carbon fork. So I did not install anything here. So 
technically this bike is not ready to ride, but it's not the time of year that I'll be riding it anyway. Um, so I got to just go grab one at a local bike shop and throw it on there and get the headset properly tightened. But just do not pound a star nut washer into a carbon fork. Aluminum, steel, all day long, carbon, no. All right. So pretty stoked on this. Pretty stoked I shaved two pounds off of this bike. Um, and yeah, kind of sweet. I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.